This is a video that's taking me a couple days to make. Today we're going to be writing a C-sharp console application that can connect to a Power BI workspaces XMLA endpoint and output the results to the, or output a semantic model to TMDL. It can then take that TMDL and re-upload it, implementing your changes. Welcome back to my video series on Microsoft Fabric, where I'm currently working my way through the Microsoft Fabric study guide in an attempt to prepare for the DP600 certification exam. All right, so let's start building. First things first, what we're gonna need to do is we're going to need a few different programs from the internet. The first program that we're gonna need to install is VS Code. You can get VS Code from one of the links down in the bottom. It's code.visualstudio.com, and then you can install it by clicking this Download for Windows button. Second, we're gonna need .NET in order to code in C Sharp and build out our console application. I'm currently using .NET 8.0. I'll have a link to the download down below, but you can get it at uh, .net.microsoft.com backslash enus download net and then I am currently running dot at 8.0 which is the latest stable version okay once you have those two installed what we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do is we are going to open up a brand new VS code window so here I am in VS code the first thing we have to do is we have to validate that dot net has installed correctly and we're gonna do that with terminal so we're gonna click this button right here where it says terminal, and we're gonna click new terminal. Then once the terminal opens up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna type .net space dash dash info and hitting the enter key. Once this is done, if .net is correctly installed, you'll be able to see the 8.0 SDK that you've installed. Next, we're gonna install a few extensions into VS Code. Extensions for VS Code are kind of like applications on your phone. They allow you to go ahead and interact um, with the application. The one that I'm going to install is TMDL support for VS Code. I'm going to install uh, C Sharp, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install .NET install tool. Um, once you have all of these installed, we can be we can start building our file. Okay, the first thing we're gonna need to build our project is we're gonna need to create a folder. I'm gonna create a folder on my desktop. I'm gonna get to my desktop by using the CD command. So if I go into my desktop and I get my path, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go CD and I'm gonna paste this in and hit enter. As you can see, I'm now currently on my desktop. I'm now gonna create a folder on my desktop for me to build this project in by typing MD and then I'll title it Power BI Video Demo and hitting enter. As you can see, it's now gone ahead and it's now created my folder. I'm now going to enter into this folder by typing CD Power BI Video Demo, hitting enter. There we go. I'm now in the folder I just created. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to create a new console app. I can make a new console app by typing dot, dot net new console and then hitting enter. As you can see, it will now create a new app. Finally, in VS Code, I'm then gonna go file, open folder. I'm gonna go browse onto my desktop and I'm going to click my Power BI video demo folder and I'm gonna select into this folder and I'm gonna trust the authors. Okay, here I am in my, my new CS project. The first thing that I need to do, and here's, here's my C Sharp program file. The first thing that I need to do is install a package. So a package in C Sharp, essentially it adds extra functionality that you can use in your program. In this case, we need to add the Microsoft Analysis Services package to the project. So I'm gonna go back into Terminal. I'm gonna click this Terminal button. Then I'm gonna click New Terminal. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it to add 
the analysis services package. I'm going to do this by typing .NET add package Microsoft dot analysis services. And I'm going to hopefully spell services correct. And there we go. What you can see is that it's now added in this package into this application. We can confirm that by going over here where it says Microsoft Analysis Services. And then right here we have the version that we did. Okay. So here I am back in my main program CS file. If I were to run this program, go run without debugging, what you'd see is it would build my project and then it'll output hello world. Currently, it doesn't do much. Now, I've gone ahead and written some C Sharp code that you can go ahead and download below. But I'm going to paste it over here and then walk you through what it does. So the first thing is I had built this in a different uh, console project, and it was called Power BI Example. So I'm going to rename my namespace here to the name of my new console app, which in this case is Power BI Video Demo. Okay. All right. So now that that's done, let's walk you through what it does. First thing, I'm importing all of my packages. As you can see here, I'm importing system, uh, system.io, so I can work with the files. I'm adding in that Microsoft Analysis Service and adding in Microsoft Analysis Service tabular extensions. Finally, within my program, I've got three methods. And think of methods as distinct pieces of code. I have the main method. I have the export to TMDL method. And then I have the publish to TMDL method. All the main method does is it takes input. So it writes to the console, select an output, one, two, and three. And then it waits for the user to enter in, enter in a number. And then depending on the number it runs, or that's entered in, it runs a method. And if someone enters in a number that doesn't exist, it'll say, write line invalid option. Please try again. The export to TMDL model, first it asks for an XMLA endpoint. Then it asks for the semantic model name that we want to export. Then it asks for a path to save the TMDL code. Then it's in a large try statement. It tries to connect to the server, get the database, and output into TMDL. And if it succeeds, it goes model download successfully. If any of the inputs were bad, or if it hits an error, it catches the exception. And it says an error has occurred. Please check your outputs. And then outputs the error message. Publish TMDL is quite a lot like export TMDL. But what it does is it takes the endpoint, takes the folder path, and then it publishes it up over. There's a little bit more logic here because I want it to save and replace over the model if there's an existing model. So it checks for that, um, and then it essentially uploads and copies over. And then if it's, it succeeds, it publishes, it goes model published successfully, and then it also has a try and catch statement. So let's go ahead and let's save this, and then let's go ahead and let's run it. So I'm gonna go run, and as you can see, it's building, and here it is working. So if we pull this down, as you can see, it's asking me to choose an option. So if I type in one for export semantic model, it asks for my endpoint. And if I just type in gibberish, right, what I should get is my error, right? So it says an error occurred, check your inputs, a connection cannot be made. Okay, and then it asks me to do it again. However, this time, if I give it valid outputs, so if I type in one to export, and then I enter in my XMLA endpoint, right? So here's, here's an endpoint to my Microsoft Fabric Service trial right here. And then I enter in a semantic model name that I know is in that workspace. So right here in that workspace um, over, and I'll show you what it looks like if I go into developer. Here I've got a semantic model name, named color picker. So if I paste in color picker or type in color picker here and then enter in the path. So let's just say I want to save it 
in this new folder I have over here called um, TMDL on my desktop, right? So if I go ahead and I take this and I paste it in, <coughs> oh, I'll get an error and let's just see. And it says authentication did not succeed. Okay, so this is an error I'm getting because I'm currently in the debug console. Let's go ahead and let's build this project and then see if it gives me that same error. So I'm gonna stop debugging by clicking that little exit button right there. And then I'm gonna go back into my terminal and I'm gonna go terminal and then new terminal again. And I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to build this um, program by typing .NET build and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go into the program folder. So in this example, it was titled Power BI Video Demo. And then if I go into my bin in here into debug in here to .NET, I will find a exe file that I can go ahead and I can run. So if I run this, here's that same application. Only now when I hit enter and I give it my path right here. So let's go ahead. Let's give it my path, and then I enter in my model name, color picker, right? And then I enter in the path that I want it to save. So in this case, right, I want it to save on my desktop in TMDL. So if I copy it here, what we should get, and there we go, is a, an interactive thing asking us to log in. So here I am, I'm gonna log into my Fabric workspace. And then what I should get is a success. And if we now go back over to this folder, right, we can now see that it's created a folder called Color Picker TMDL. So here's the TMDL for that uh, for that uh, model, right? So if I go into the tables, like here I am, I've got a table called Color Pickers, and if I go into that same semantic model on the Power BI service, I have a table named Color Pickers. Now, maybe I just want it to be named Color Picker. So let's go ahead and let's make a change to the program using our file. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go open with, and I'm gonna open with VS Code. So here we are. Here is our TMDL, right? So we've got Color Pickers, we've got all this stuff. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to change some stuff. So I'm going to remind or get rid of this Z. So the table is just called color picker. And then I'm going to rename this column instead of color names to color name. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit save. All right. So I've now made changes to my model using TMDL. I'm now going to exit out of this. And I'm now going to go ahead and I'm gonna re-upload this. So I'm gonna go back into my program and I'm gonna to go to to publish. I'm gonna enter in my same semantic model name. So, or my same like Power BI XMLA endpoints, so that's right here. I'm gonna paste that in, I'm gonna hit enter. And then the path to my published folder, right? It's this right here. So I'm going to enter in this path, I'm gonna hit enter. Well, you can see it's going to ask me to re-authenticate. And then hopefully it'll successfully publish up my model. There we go. Model published successfully. All right. So now let's go ahead and let's go back into my Microsoft Fabric experience. Now, if you remember when we were looking at this model earlier, color picker had a color table named color pickers, and then this was color names. And as you can see right here, it's changed. All right. So that right there is, first of all, how you build your first C-sharp program. But second of all, a really quick demo about how you can use C-sharp to publish out, um, and I'm going to exit the program by just hitting enter, to, to publish out semantic models. Now, some of you uh, might be like, well, why would I do all that, right? I can just go into the preview features and I can turn on TMDL. Well, the answer is, is that when you are in a enterprise scenario, 
right? Maybe you want to automatically deploy uh, changes to a semantic model if, if, for example, there's a new dimension added. Maybe you want to automatically add that, that dimension. What you could do is you could use something like an Azure Function app to go ahead and automatically run this C-sharp. So the second there's new, a new dimension added in the database, that model or that measure is automatically available. Um, and it's created by this function app that runs overnight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you're uh, excited about TMDL and about C Sharp. And if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you for watching.